Listen, I really want to start with a sincere congratulations. It is, I'm really impressed with what you pulled off on your debut film, and I just want to say congrats. It means a lot coming from you. Thank you. Yeah, there's yeah. no fucking way people aren't going to lose their shit when they're, sorry for my curse, <laughs> when they watch <laughs> Go the for movie. It. Go they're, for they're, it. So the, I think the most immediate thing is people are going to see this, and other like directors are going to see this, and other people in the industry are going to see this and be like, oh, he needs to do more action. Oh. So are you ready for that phone call? Don't know, man. I, I need a good nap and a holiday after this. I got I got to be honest. <laughs> but you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, like yeah. there's going to be a lot more calls for you know dev action star. Yeah, I mean, I hope for loads of other people. I hope this kicks the door open like Slumdog did. You know, like it's about representation. It's about you know infusing the genre with like new stories, new perspectives. You know, different cultural kind of viewpoints. So I'm, that's that's mission accomplished, I guess. So I have some curves that I like to throw at the beginning of every Wicked. interview. Do it, do it. So there's gonna be people out there that have never seen anything you've done before. Yeah. Take away this film because it's the easy answer. If someone has never seen anything, what's the first thing you'd like them watching and why? <laughs> um, probably Lion, maybe. Oh. Did a film called Lion. Oh, I, the, oh I'm yeah, aware. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, a wonderful director, Garth Davis. It's about this this kid who gets separated from his family in India and uh, grows up in Australia and tracks him down via Google. But um, every performance in that is breathtaking. The young child, Sonny, in that, oh my God. But it's, it's really a, a hopeful, resilient story. Love that. Um, if you're up for something a little bit weirder, David Lowry did this movie with him called Green Knight. I just think he is a magical human being and his brain, the way it works and the kindness he imbues in his, in, in his process. And yeah, I, yeah. I recommend both of those films yeah. oh, strong, thank you. strongly. Um, what does it mean to be part of the thing that finally won Wes and, and an Oscar? Oh my God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Henry Sugar. Yeah. I, that's crazy he hasn't won an Oscar. Wes is awesome. Uh, he didn't show up, did he? Um, he was getting ready to film his new movie in Spain or something yeah, next yeah, yeah, morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, Wes is, oh man, again, what a treat to be a tiny cog in one of uh, Wes Anderson's, you know, complex mechanisms. You and Kaya, you guys are having a good year. She's also having uh, with the gentleman. Um, oh, the, what, the Guy Ritchie TV show? Yes. Yeah, she's amazing and everything. So yeah. it's been like 15 years since Skins. Is there, do you think at any point down the road, there will be some sort of reunion or some sort of something to celebrate? Like, cause that was a big thing for like a whole generation of yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I still feel like that dude, Anwar. Awkward and and yeah. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it would be amazing. They're amazing. They're, all of those, every single one of those souls in that is just truly, yeah, special. Yeah, also it means a lot. To, I mean, a lot of people grew up with that show. Yeah, yeah, they did. Yeah. You know? So on Twitter, a lot of people asked me to ask this. Uh, when will you do a rom-com? <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I, would, I love rom-coms. Like I, I, yeah, you've got to put some happiness and warm, fuzzy feelings out in the world. So I'm down. Yeah, I'm throwing that out there. People seem very interested in that. Yeah. So I know how hard this, pro I've, I've heard everything about what went on, now we're getting into your movie, yeah. to make this project happen, yeah. how it was originally streaming and Jordan Peele. And so what was it like actually, I was in the audience at the South by World premiere. What was it like for you walking out there? Cause and the emotions that you must've felt with Jordan just standing there, like putting his name on the project and everything you went through yeah. to get to that moment. And then the fucking crazy reaction of the crowd. It was like the paint wasn't even dry on the film. Like we literally just finished the DI and I'd done a quick mad scramble pass at the sound on the movie. And uh, the, you know, there were some issues technically at the beginning of the film and I was absolutely losing my mind. I was like, this is just, you know, I'm, I'm ready to be hung, drawn and quartered, you know, and uh, just the amount of goodwill for, for the film, for me, um, it was very overwhelming. You know, I'd made a joke that, you know, I'd. There'd been these things of like, you know, where is he now? You know, like, you know, what happened to Dev Patel? And I was like, well, this is where I've been. Um, but uh, it was uh, nothing short of humbling. And one of those, yeah, I, I felt so blessed. And I did shed a tear, which was slightly embarrassing. I turned away, but I couldn't help it. It was just seeing all those people stand up and yeah, man, 
Blasto souls in that theater. Well, the other, listen, but here's the thing. They're, they're not giving you some bullshit reception. Yeah. Like, people love the movie. Like, there is some crazy ass action in this film that's bone crunching, blood splattering. Like, there are things in, in the action scenes that I'm like, okay, holy F. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I want to actually specifically talk about that. Yeah. How important was it for you to craft action that was very visceral and pushing the boundaries of what gets shown in a movie? Yeah, I mean, you know, the the film requires patience. And I was like, you know, we're gonna make the audience sit in this kind of like section of world building, you know, you know, philosophy or whatever. But when we give it, we're gonna give it and we're gonna go. And uh and for me it was like, you know, how what would real self-defense feel like? You know, you know, th this guy is like a caged animal, he's cornered, and it has to be primal and gritty and messy and like gritted teeth and drool and scratching, biting. And, um, you know, I, I didn't want it to feel like choreo. So every, t every time I would feel like, oh, we're falling into too much of a choreo kind of feel, how can we make it more jagged? How can we, how can we change the camera? How can we not cut as much? And um, for me, it was like some of the hardest acting I've ever done, you know, in terms of like having to express through that, it's, you have to, no pun intended, swing big with the emotion and, and to make it sit in your body correctly, and I'm a gangly, awkward dude, it was tough, um, you know, but I think, I think we did a cool job with it. And, you know, we hired one of the stunt guys um, who had a dream of being a, a camera operator, and I saw him, and he was doing the little previses on his Canon, Canon, Canon camera. And I was like, Steven, you're, you're like a ninja, dude. You, you, you're doing the falls like all the stuntmen. Like, what if we put a camera on your hand and you could roll with me and you could get under the armpit of the action and, 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 and you know, it gives it this kind of like primal feel, which is really cool. Yeah, mission accomplished. Thank you. Um, so yeah. I'm fascinated by the editing process because of where it all comes together. Yeah. So I'm curious, who did you show it to that gave, like, that gave you really brutal and honest feedback that made you look at the film in a new way that possibly made you to change something that you would have never thought about changing? Um, we didn't show it to many people. Uh, at one point when I was really struggling, uh, the director of Lion, Garth, um, you know, uh, he, I, I, I sent it to him and Garth is just like, you know, the stuff he responds to, he's like, now I know why you're doing the movie. He looked right through the action because I knew the action was sitting at a good place and he went right to the philosophy and the religion and the spiritualism. Um, uh, but yeah, so, he, you know, he's just someone I trusted and and so he was great, yeah. Did he give you, was there anything that you changed as a result of feedback from people? We've constantly been changing the movie. I mean, like, you know, it's, it's difficult when you're a first time filmmaker and then you're making a film and then it gets, on an island during a pandemic, we had no money. You know, I literally like have shots from my mobile phone in there and GoPros and, you know, it was it was really hectic making this thing. And then, you know, we hadn't even finished and Netflix had swooped in and bought it. And I don't think they quite knew what they were buying, but they were very supportive at the time. But um, they eventually let go of the film because of the nature of it. And uh, and I thought we were we were lost, but we were chasing a certain set of creative notes. And then, you know, you constantly find yourself chasing your tail. But what I've found in this process is, you know, the film snaps back like a rubber band to its truest intention and what it's always supposed to be. The film tells you what it needs to be. Um, and that's what happened with this. Every time I try to push it too far in a different direction or, you know, push more and more action or whatever, it just didn't quite work. And this is where it sat and felt right for me and Jordan and the guys. Did you yeah. end up with a lot of deleted scenes? There's a lot. <laughs> There's a, this Actually, I think some of my best directed stuff, like compositionally and like, yeah, it didn't make it in the cut. And that was hard. Are you a fan of extended cuts or do you, or are you a fan of people never seeing the deleted scenes? I think we're going to chuck the deleted scenes out there on, on, on the DVD extra. Yeah. Is it like 10, there's, 20, 30? There's a whole minutes? alternate be beginning and a whole whole alternate ending. Different, it ended differently. And the, the the villain had a whole different intro, which was unbelievable. But, you know, it went. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've spoken, listen, I've spoken to a lot of filmmakers. And it's so interesting because some, like Denis on Dune, he won't, he won't show any. Like the deleted scenes are gone. We will never see them. Uh, and then there's other directors who like Ridley Scott, who will release a whole other version yeah. with tons of other stuff. You know yeah. what I mean? So I'm just, I'm curious what you'll end up being as a yeah. filmmaker. I think for me, it's like, I, you know, I don't know. I was, 
in my 20s when I started writing it. And then I, I shot it when I was, I don't know, 29, 30. And it's like, for me, it's nothing, there's no pretentiousness about it. I just, you see my heart and soul and, and bits that work, bits that didn't. It's the working out is on the page and there for everyone to see. Um, but I threw everything at it and I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm proud of, 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 of it, yeah. Yeah, and you should be. Um, <laughs> are you already thinking about like, future films like do you want to lean into being more of like a director or are you thinking more about acting are you yeah. thinking about doing both again i think both both is is the tr the honest answer you know it's I, I i've as a performer i've never felt like the most technically adept actor and you know even when it comes to words it's been difficult so for me it's i've always i've gone on a kind of very on a feeling basis. I'm a type of guy that listens to the same song over and over and everyone around me is like, can we stop listening to that song by Ben Howard or whatever? And I'm like, I, and I don't even know the lyrics, but the feeling of it. And I, I, I kind of experience things very visually. So for me, actually holding a camera or knowing how to frame something or how I wanted to light a scene or like, I, it kind of came very instinctually, which was surprising to me, you know, and I would, it was fun challenging everyone around me to let's just try and hold the shot longer. Let's try and do this. Or so, yeah, it was, it's, I'd love to do it again. If I, if I was so lucky to get the opportunity, you're going to get lucky again. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm really not worried. I've been doing this a long time. What does it mean to you to have the producers of John wick and people that worked on the raid as part of this movie? Man, it's crazy. I mean, they are action icons and, um, you know, it, it was cool. And we couldn't actually get the John wick stunt team that I I did a bit of training with in LA because of COVID and the border closures. So we found this amazing gentleman, Brahim Chab, who, who, who um, we found on YouTube and he was in Thailand and the border hadn't closed. We had we got him in like a day before it closed and he came in and he was a beast and and, and we, we had the best time together. And, you know, for me, it's not just a director that comes in and watches stunt guys do it. And you're like, okay, that looks good. Can you make it a bit faster or whatever? I was in it. I was performing and I was like, hey, I know you've put that kick in, but look, I can actually do this kick. What if we do that? Or like, so it became this amazing collaboration with the team, you know? Yeah. Talk a little bit about, I'm just about out of time. I, I, someone on my staff pointed out that like 20 years ago, they sent me the article about you winning a martial arts tournament. Like I saw the yeah. pictures and <laughs> I, I don't think people realize your history yeah. with, you know, with this, which enabled you to do things that maybe someone else couldn't have done. So I'm just curious. Um, I don't know. What am I curious about? I'm curious about your, if you can talk about your history with martial arts and yeah. your fascination with it or love of it. Yeah. And also, because one of the things that I loved about the movie is you don't have a lot of quick cuts. Yeah. You have more oneers. You have yeah. more long shots, which really pull the audience in, even if they don't realize it. Yeah. So can you sort of talk about, I guess, all of that, which is not a great question. Yeah, no, it's a brilliant question. So the genesis of it was me watching Bruce Lee through a banister as a kid, Enter the Dragon. That was my beginning of my love of cinema, period seeing a guy like that, that kind of I related to skin pigment wise, hair, everything. I was like, God, I want to be like that dude. And then, you know, I, I started ferociously watching everything. Jet Li, Samo, you know, Donnie Yen, Jackie, then the Indonesian raid films, Korean cinema. That took my breath away and took it to a whole new level of, of filmmaking for me. And, you know, in terms of the action for the movie, I was you know, it does start a bit cuttier when he's not as trained and he's and he can't control his emotions. And he, you know, the concept was, this is my face, this is my body. How can you break as many things in this bathroom with it? <laughs> Ragdoll me. <laughs> and, and, and that was the beginning. And then as he learns to kind of, you know, harness his instrument and, and, and hone his powers, that's when the sequences hold for longer and you start to see him. But, um, you know, it just came from a place of like, the film's called Monkey Man, we're gonna make it primal. And um, and and that was kind of the genesis of the action. Um, I, it was a big question. I think I've answered some of it. Is there anything I'm missing? Um, but yeah, that, that's kind of the journey with it, yeah. Yeah, I could ask you a million other things, but I have to wrap. I'm okay. just gonna say sincerely, you did such a great job and I look forward to seeing it again. Really appreciate you, brother. Uh, Thank you so much.